What's going on everybody? It is Brendan here. Welcome back to Dad Planet. I'm going to take you on a little treasure hunt today. So we're going to head up to the Goodwill bins. I'm going to go dig for treasures. We're going to talk about all of the bolos that I find at this trip. And then after that, we'll head over to a Goodwill retail store. And you know what? Sometimes it really only takes one item to make an entire trip or an entire day worth it. Stay tuned. All right, let's zoom on up to the Goodwill bins, shall we? So my strategy when I go to the bins is going to be a little bit different than when I'm in retail stores, especially when it comes to items like coats and windbreakers and things of that nature. We're approaching spring and summer, but we're paying by the pound at the Goodwill bins. So if I find something like to pull over, uh, larger coat, something like that, I'm gonna look a little bit closer when I'm at the bins uh, than I otherwise would in retail stores with these seasonal months coming up. So keep that in mind. This first item that I actually run into, I like this because this is a utility, right? This is something that somebody that works at Papa John's needs way more than they want, right? It's like the um, pizza warmer bag. A little bit greasy on the back, but there are nine current currently listed and there are 14 solds in the last 90 days. This is an item that somebody really needs, okay? Not necessarily something that they want. I would much rather sell them something they need uh, than otherwise. So I'm checking the Velcro strap. It works, but it's a little bit light, and do not use Velcro in your listing, by the way. Uh, that will get you Vero'd. Uh, they're pretty adamant about not using the term Velcro, so keep that in mind. And I have a bunch of stuff in my cart already that I will show you here towards the end. But yeah, anytime you can sell something that somebody really, really needs, that'll always take preference. So checking out this bag, I don't, I couldn't really recognize the brand here. So I had to pass that up. And I mean, I could have taken the time to check it out, but uh, I just didn't. Now, Bose, one of the things I like about Bose, and I think this is a SoundDoc Series 2. Unfortunately, this does not have a power cord. And I have a feeling that coming up on garage sale season, I'm going to run into one of these. So it's just a matter of time. This might have to sit for me for a little bit. But the thing I like about Bose, outside of their high quality, is their durability. So I'm not necessarily worried that this doesn't work, even though it was probably tossed around a little bit in these bins, because of how, how well made the product is in general. So the sound is great, but they really make a durable product. So I think I can sell that for $30 even without the power cord, but it's likely that I'll just wait for one to turn up in a garage sale and hopefully that will also come in a video in the future for you folks to check out but yes bose their stuff holds up and so for that reason i'm going to put that in my cart I, I think the the cords the chargers i could probably pay 10 bucks on ebay and, and grab one and then res just resell it together but uh, i'll hold off and we'll see if i can't find one at a garage sale one of my strategies at the bins is always find light items like hats, like t-shirts specifically. So you're gonna see here, I find a pretty funny looking Golden Girls shirt. Betty White just recently passed away. And so I thought this might have some value. And so originally I, I put it in my cart, but upon comp research, um, there was no value. So I put that back. This zip hoodie, however, this Jameson zip hoodie, this is in phenomenal condition. It probably needs to be, you know, have a, rent, a lint roller taken to it, but it's in excellent condition. And it's not the varsity style, like some of the comps you'll see on the screen are, but I think I can get $40 for this. It is well made, the little jewelry, the zipper compartment, everything functioning properly. That was an excellent garment. So I'm almost 100% sure that I can sell that for 40 where the varsity style ones were selling, I think pre-owned for around $50. But yeah, my strategies um, at the bins, always lightweight. And again, that pullover, even with summer approaching, I'm still gonna go for it because you're paying by the pound and it's still lightweight enough for it to make sense for me to put in the cart and take home. So. That was a really good find, and I'm pretty sure that it will sell quickly. I think this is George brand. I, I don't, it doesn't uh, ring a bell to me as being a very good brand. This is a Nike pullover. The style on this one is like the um, Icon Clash, I think. I'll put the comps on the screen. I don't love the fact that this is an extra small, but this gold chain style, this is a, um, 
this is an item that will sell to a specific crowd. And I've said this before, but if you find the tag and you look underneath that tag, a Nike has the colorway code and style code and UPC code tag underneath that larger tag. And that will help you identify a, a Nike garment a little bit better. I'm gonna throw that in my cart. Comps were good enough, but again, that extra small size is probably going to hold me up just a little bit. Now, just like I'm looking for t-shirts, when I go to the bins, I'm also looking for hats and not just, you know, any hat in particular. A lot of them are not going to be worth your time when you're going to the bins. But again, because hats are so lightweight, I mean, you could theoretically come away with 20 of them and they might weigh about two pounds. And so, you know, do 20 times 15, like that's a substantial return. This is a hat though that is a bolo that you're going to want to always be on the lookout for. So this is an oil skin hat by Outback Trading Company. Now, if you look on the tag, it's an XL and the style is Grizzly. There is a market for this hat for sure. The size XL, it's a little bit bent, but that's not going to be much of an issue. The person that ends up purchasing this will, you know, fix it to their liking. I'll tidy it up again with the limp brush and get it, get it rocking and rolling. But condition wise, it's a phenomenal garment and I think I can get 30 to $35 for that piece, which is wonderful. Now here's a pullover again. This was in a retail store. I would pass this up, right? This would be about $7, but it's super lightweight, mountain hardware. The style is Gore Wind Stopper. This is a, a women's large, not a single stain or issue that I could see on it. In, extremely well made and in extremely good condition. So this is a $2 piece that I think I can resell for you know $25 to $30. So if I was in retail store, wouldn't do it, but I'm at the bins. So this is also a bolo right here. And you know I passed them up because quite honestly, I didn't wanna get my hands any dirtier than they already were, but they are probably actually both brand new. And you could get 10 to $12 for those Hanes tidy whities those vintage Hanes tidy whities I just passed them up, I'm, I'm trying to move quick, but I would not do that the second time around if you, knew for a fact that they were in new condition. You cannot sell, at least last time I checked, uh, pre-owned underwear on eBay. So those vintage Hanes would have probably sold. I should have grabbed them because they were also lightweight. Citizens of Humanity, this style pant is the Sid. It is a dark wash pant. Again, mint condition. I mean, basically no fraying at the bottoms, really clean. The waist size was 33. The inseam measurement was 30. Um, home run there, I think I can list those for 30 bucks. And then another garment that was in mint condition. This is a North Face Canyonlands, um, full zip jacket, lightweight, men's. The only thing that, you know, is no kind of no good about this is the fact that it's a men's small but brand new, and they sell better brand new on eBay than they do pre-owned, but brand new, they're selling for around $60. So I have to believe that I could get 30 bucks for that garment too. So, I mean, those were really, honestly, some spectacular finds. We're gonna go back to my computer and I'll show you the rest of the items that I sourced this trip that did not make it on camera. But before we do any of that, we're gonna head over to a Goodwill retail store and I'm gonna need your help on one of the items that I end up sourcing here. So let's take a look at that trip now. When I'm sourcing to resell, I'm definitely not my target market, but in this instance, I 100% am. So this is a Yankee Candle trick or treat candy corn slash buttercream scented candle. To me, this is a no brainer. I know there's somebody that's going to absolutely must have this and they're willing to pay a premium price for it. So it's a 12 ounce candle that I know I can probably get 30 to $40 for in the comps even say the same thing. You have to go to Terapeak to find a full year's worth, but that was an amazing candle to find, very rare. It has a lenticular label on it, so it gives you like the, the illusion of depth when you look at it, when you move it, pretty, pretty cool. And then, you know, every once in a blue moon, you'll find something like this. This is a pair of Louis Vuitton canvas shoes. And as always, when you're sourcing an item that is a luxury brand inside of a thrift store, the question of authenticity comes up. So I want you to take a close look at these, but towards the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the pictures that I took of this item. No, I do not have it listed because I want your opinion 
on this as well. For those of you that want to do a little bit of investigating yourself, are those shoes real? Because if they are, the closest comp, and it's a high top comp that I could find, is like five, six hundred dollars. So that would be a phenomenal sale if they were real. Uh, I always have my doubts, but you never know. So we'll take a closer look at that when I get back to my computer screen. And I, you know, there's shoes here that uh, they just didn't fit the criteria for me for whatever reason. These Neo boots, no, no value for me. And yeah, so only end up picking two items up from this retail store. But again, I only spend about 30 minutes in retail store. So let's take a look at the rest of the stuff. All right, so we'll get back to the Louis Vuitton shoes in a second. I just want to show you some of the things that I sourced that were not on camera. Here we go. The first one, you may have seen this in my cart, Detroit Lions. This is a Mitchell and Ness hat. I thought this was sports specialties when I first sourced it, which would have been a huge hit. But this still, this will be like 10 to $15. It's got, you know, some hole, some really small holes here. Even though it's a very firm hat, it's 15 bucks at best, so... Just uh, heavily focused on hats and t-shirts when I'm at the bins. Here's a t-shirt here. There's a market for this. WrestleMania, um, Ultimate Warrior, and Randy Macho Man Savage. Both are deceased. This is a size 2X. It's $10 to $15 on that shirt. Next one is um, Piranha Joe. I, these sell pretty well for me. So there's a picture of the tag. And there's also a little like piranha that hangs at the bottom of the shirt. This is from Grand Turk. It says... The adventure begins. So again, that's probably $15 to $20. They sell well. Next is a shirt that's sold out online. So Homage is headquartered in Columbus, Ohio. I'll show you the tag for those of you that might not be familiar with it. This shirt says Mother of Dragons. So the fact that it's sold out or discontinued, um, I picked this up. And again, I think I can get probably $25 for it. So in between $20 and $25 that shirt will sell. I love the fact that it's sold out because you can no longer get it. So picking that up at the bins is a no brainer. And then this one here I've sold in the past, very standard Pizza Planet shirt from Toy Story. It's like a Heather Red, it's got like a distressed logo on the front. I've sold them before, but it's not gonna get me more than $10. So um, just pick that up because again, lightweight and we're at the bins. Now I'm gonna show you the shoes that I picked up. First pair is a pair of cycling shoes. This is CD and these are model T1. It's a size 42, you have to take this um, plate off to see what the size is. Uh, it has the original insoles. These are expensive when they're brand new. So I'm going to list these for $50. They are a US size eight, but this was a pretty excellent find, especially with like spring and summer coming up because, you know, cycling shoes tend to sell best during those seasons. So 50 bucks for those. The next I'm not too crazy about because they're always kind of heavy. So these are Keen Newport H2s, but they are kids. So they're blue, they have like blue and gray camo on the bottom. They are a size six. They're in excellent condition, but I'm gonna list these at $20. I wanna move these quickly. The fact that uh, they're $20, but they're heavy, means somebody, especially if they're on the West Coast, is gonna end up paying like $16 to have them shipped even at two pounds. So I might have to sell these regionally, but they were in good enough condition. And you know, picking them up at the bins, even though they are a little bit heavier, is still you know, gonna make me money at the end of the day. So I don't do a ton of youth shoes but this pair was in a nice enough condition for me to pick up all right next is a pair of asics quantum 360 these are like triple white they do need to be cleaned it looks a little bit discolored uh but i have a feeling that when i throw them in the wash they'll come out pretty nice so the soles are excellent okay and they're a size six and a half which i'm not entirely crazy about i would like them to be a little bit larger for women's but they have like a little bit of a sparkle to them so i think cleaning them up in the wash will really help these stand out a little bit and um the insoles look good too so just a quick touch up on these I, i'm gonna have to list these probably around maybe 25 dollars and just get them out the door the comps are not fantastic for this style um, they used to be but it's kind of tapering off a little bit so 25 bucks i'll be happy with that next is a pair of new balance 877 these are men's walking shoes um the fact that they are a um, extra wide is what I like about them. They take this rubber band off. The soles are in pretty good condition. And uh, again, the fact that they're wide, I'll end up selling these even though they're a men's size eight. It might take a little bit longer, but yeah, this is another $25 right here. Um, the style does sell. It's the size that is probably gonna hold me up. So it might take a little bit longer, but 25 bucks for those. 
And then finally, I just, I'm, I just continue to be floored with how well Crocs sell. Not only how well they sell, but the prices they command. This is a pair of Crocs Yukon men's. And I mean, I'm seeing these selling for 80, 75 to $80 brand new. That just is insanity to me. Soles are in excellent condition. They're a men's size 13. Um, I've seen comps around $35, $30 pre-owned. So it's where I'm gonna list mine at, 30 bucks. And uh, I mean, you really can't beat that. So this is a pretty good haul. And I'm gonna show you those Louis Vuitton shoes for the last time here. Let me go grab those. All right, so here they are. Now I'm gonna put pictures on the screen for those of you that wanna use Google Lens. Are these real or are these fake? Damier, I believe is the style. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So D-A-M-I-E-R is the um, style for this shoe. There are the soles, picture of the sides here. And again, I'll put all of the pictures that I have taken. These are not listed yet. And you can see, you know, as, as we talked about before, I paid 10 bucks for them. But for those of you that wanna do some investigative work or sleuth work on your own, uh, Google Lens them or whatever, let me know if you think these are real or fake. So I might take them to my mother and have her give me a second opinion on them or maybe even run it up to a Louis Vuitton store and see if somebody will will offer their opinion as well, but I don't know. So they're definitely not listed and the pictures that I've taken are not gonna be used for a listing. I just did that for you folks. So what do you think? Do you think those shoes are real or are they fake? Because that would really make that specific trip to both the thrift store and the Goodwill bins even better. So anyway, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Brendan here, Dad Planet. Hit that like button if you liked what you saw or you learned something today. And then always consider becoming a member of the Dad Planet family by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell notification so that you know every time an upload hits YouTube. That's all I got for you. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.